Hi, and welcome to the Terrain Wizard tutorial. This is probably the easiest way to create a custom procedural terrain with a significant amount of control on it. Let's see how we do it. I have imported Terrain Wizard into the project and I have a brand new scene with nothing in it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all create a terrain. So having created a terrain I then need to go in and select the Terrain Wizard and now I have all my Terrain Wizard tools available to me. So the first thing that I want to do is just generate a terrain. So click generate and there we go I have my first terrain. The lighting's not so good. Let's do something with the lighting. So we go to Tools, Wizards Code, Lighting. Let's go with Overcast Sky and we'll go Mid Morning. There we go, looks much better. Let's have a look around this. So Tools, Wizards Code, Add Fly Cam to the main camera, hit Play. And we have our Fly Camera. We can take a look at our terrain. What if we don't like this terrain? We don't like the way that it's textured, for example. Well, that's easily fixed. We can go in to activate our terrain wizard and we have a few biomes, more coming in the future, but let's change this biome to say high peaks. Click generate and this is going to change not just the texturing but also the, the stamps that are used. I could if I want go into global settings and say well I actually want this one to be quite a bit higher than it already is. So click generate and we will have a more mountainous area but you see the texturing is completely different same kind of overall setup that we have these two relatively flat areas there and there with a bridge in between here this time we're going to use the rolling hills textures but we're not going to restamp the terrain we're going to imagine we like the terrain but we want to change the texturing so we just click fully textured terrain and there we go we have a completely different textured terrain, but with the same layout. Wonderful. Now, it doesn't stop there. We could, for example, go in here and say, well, this bit in the middle here, we want that to be flatter. So we can go in, and because this is just a standard terrain tool, we can go to smooth heights and we can make the brush a fair bit larger and well maybe not that large it's a bit too large there we go and we can take this area here and flatten it out looking good if we now zoom in on that we should see it is significantly flatter than it was before and it is you see but the texturing has now changed right no problem we can go back and we can go to our terrain wizard we can do the same thing as we did before and fully texture or we could go into our biome texturing settings and here we have multiple layers with different rules for how they're applied. So we're currently on the, the grass dark and there's no rules for that. But if I click edit on soil, you can see that we're using standard terrain tool brush masks to apply these things. Not only that, but we can also enable manual painting and I can now paint manually on here, which you can see is because it's flatter, it's taking away some of the soil that was in there before. Or I could say, well, actually, I don't want any of the grass dark at all. I just want this to be fairly light and soily. So you see, you can apply as many of these as you want in any particular application. So how is the train actually stamped? Well, let's take a look at that. We click the generate button and what happens is multiple stamps are placed around the terrain based on the mask that we have. We can actually see this in effect if we click the show stamp debug view in the advanced terrain generation. What this is going to do is give an overlay showing us where the stamps are applied and at what uh, size. So there's the blue stamps, the green stamps and the red stamps. And if you scroll down, you can see the height that the terrain was when that particular stamp was applied. So you can get a good feel for what is going on by turning that on. And that can sometimes allow you to fine tune the stamps. But what are the stamps? Well, let's have a look. We go into biome settings here. Let's go to the red stamps to start with. 
and we'll start with these masks at the top here what we can do is we can add in different kinds of stamps so instead of having these kind of very noisy stamps let's go for something like this one let's just use the one stamp normally it picks one at random from the two that are in there now you can see we get a very different feel for this stamp on its own it's a noisy stamp and so we're getting quite a lot of variations in the terrain itself if i come down in low you can really see what's going on there. I'm just going to turn on another feature just for the purposes of this video. Reposition seam camera under the advanced terrain generation. That allows me to regenerate the terrain and the seam camera won't move. So you can get a feel for the changes that you've made. And you can see all these really peaky pieces over here because we've got this kind of ridgy noise coming in. Now let's add some variety into that. Let's add in the Perlin Strata noise. And if we click Generate Now, we'll see that there's a lot more going on in the edges of the terrain here. Now, we can do all sorts of additional things. We can, for example, and for this I'm going to want to pull out a little bit so you can see more of the effect on the terrain. We can change the height of these stamps. Now, this is going to hit the top of the height map but it will illustrate what we're trying to do it didn't come out enough you can see how we've increased the steepness and the height obviously gone too high because there's not enough space on this height map for something of this height but we can bring that back down again we can add a lot of randomization into how steep they are if we've got height really low we're not seeing a lot going on but where we do see it sometimes we're seeing a lot of steepness coming in but we can increase the values a little bit and we'll see a different outcome again you see we're getting some flat tops here or flattish tops we're getting some rounded hills over here you can also play with the size i'm skipping blend we'll do that one in a moment if we have a very low size then we get many more stamps and you can actually see the individual stamps the peaks on individual stamps here and probably want to go in a bit closer there you go if we go to the opposite end of the spectrum they're going to be much larger and so you get much more interaction between the individual stamps which gives you a more rounded feel than a spiky feel that we were getting earlier on and if we put a mountain stamp in here let's try that one so this actually has ridges on it and so now the first stamp when it places the first stamp it's giving you these kind of peaky ridgy things and then the second one when that's getting placed is giving us the noise so i actually quite liked it with the with this one and so let's have a look at that again and now let's go in and have a look at what we can do with this low area the the blue areas now the blue area on this particular map let's imagine we've got a kind of um, a strategy game and this is a base with a bridge between and a base here so let's go into our blue stamps and let's change these to some nice undulating noise okay so we're going to increase the blend and what that does is it increases the amount of effect this stamp has on already existing terrain so it's going to pull it down a little bit so let's up that blend even more and we can see we're already smoothing it off now We've got a fairly smooth bit in the middle, but it's narrow. It's small, right? The green and the red is, is mixing into it. So we can take the green and we can bring the green heights right down and increase the blend into the red. We'll also change this one to an undulating feel, like so. And that will pull down the reds a bit intense over here but that is pulling it down even more let's drop these reds down we're way too intense there we actually still want some height on it oh we've still got the size up really high that's what's going on there there we go that's more like it and now we have a flat area in the middle because we've reduced the intensity of the surrounding areas and we've also made the blue pull down anything that's already there so we have a good flat area for the players to work in now we might want to increase the bridge the amount of the green that's coming in so we can go back to the green we can increase the height a little bit there decrease the blender touch and that should bring in 
the bridge a bit more. It certainly brought up this area here, but we don't yet have any of the bridge coming in. The size of the stamp is too high there as well. There we go. We can see it starting to come in here. And we can keep playing around with those settings. I probably want something a little bit more intense on my actual stamps here. Let's go with that one to bring in some noise. There we go. Now we have the bridge. It's perhaps a bit too much on here, but you can see it's all a balance between the different sliders. Okay, we can see we're definitely getting that bridge coming in. So you can play around with these stamps and that will change the feel quite considerably. If you need more stamps, there's loads on the store. I actually have some packs of them. Um, they're nice and cheap. You get a very big discount from having bought this pack. Um, but there's a whole load of other really good stamps out there as well. So there's no shortage of that. And as you've seen here, you can just generate noise and use noise as well. So let us know on Discord how you get on. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.